Hello everyone, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Assalamu alaikum everyone. So here we are discussing another question on final accounts and yes, we are preparing for our section C, which is a constructed response question. There will be a, there might be a question of 20 marks uh, on the topic of final accounts and we need to prepare good for that. So yes, we are going to do a question now, which is going to help us while preparing for our exams. Now, without any further ado, let us just, uh, you know, uh, go forward with it and make sure that we nail this examination question. Now, the name of the examination question is Loudon Company. And this type of question you should reasonably expect in your examinations. I have already prepared a draft structure of the answer. And this will always help us in, you know, saving time in this lecture so that, uh, you know, we can easily focus on the examination requirements. I'll, I'll go through the structure that I've already prepared. And I'll also help you in structuring further uh, uh, this answer. And this will certainly help you a lot. All right. So here we are looking at Loudoun Company. And let's go for it. So it says that Loudoun Company has prepared a draft statement of profit or loss for the year ended 30th September X8. Now note that your year end is 30th September X8, which means that your, your year start would be 1st October X7. I always say that it is wise that you write down your year end date and your year start date in your, uh, in, in, in your response sheet so that you remember what year end and year start is. So for us, year start is 1st October X7. And accordingly, year end is 30, 30th September X8, right? So we are just going to note that down so that it helps us in future. So it says that Loudon Company has prepared a statement of profit or loss for the year ended 30th September X8 before any adjustments required by notes 1 to 4 below. So there are going to be at least four notes in this question. We need to uh, accommodate the adjustments required from note 1 till 4 into this question and then fulfill the requirements of our examiner. The draft profit has been added to the retained earnings. So that part has already been done. And the summarized trial balance of Loudon Company as at 30th September X8 is as follows. Now, the trial balance structure is as follows that first you have give, been given equity shares of dollar one each and the share capital, the ordinary share capital is $10,000. Following on, there is retained earnings as at 30th September X8. So uh, we, we already have to draft retained earning available in front of us. And the value of this draft retained earning is 4122. Now, I've already written down this draft retained earning, which is provided as per question of 4122. But yes, as referred to by the question, this is before any adjustments required by note 1 to 4. So we need to make further pluses or minuses in this retained earnings to eventually come on to the final retained earnings that should be used further in our question. Yeah. So the retained earnings, the draft retained earnings is 4122. Following on, we have office buildings. So this is a non-current asset of 20,000. We have factories at cost uh, of 40,000. Then we have accumulated depreciation for both these assets, office buildings and factories. And this accumulated depreciation is on 1st of October X7. The fact that accumulated depreciation in our trial balance is only updated till the start of year represents the facts that for the year depreciation has not yet been accounted for. So we don't have the closing accumulated depreciation available to us. We need to calculate it on our own. So this is something new for us. Yeah. Then we have an environmental provision of 1228. And this environmental provision is also valued at the start of year. So the environmental provision has not been updated till the year end. 
and sir what do you mean by environmental provision most likely this is the consequence of a compulsory disposal cost being recognized we remember that for compulsory disposal cost we had to account for the time value effect we have to record the unwinding of discount impact impact further on so we need to update the time value effect for this year and then accommodate the time value effect in the retained earnings and our upcoming financial statements so we need to update it till the year end yeah there are ready-made current liabilities given of 34,500, ready-made current assets given for 14,700. Then we have proceeds of loan note of 5,000. But yes, the loan note needs to be further accounted for since note number one has been referred here. So there is something which has not been done yet by the examiner and we need to apply the proper accounting technique here. So yes, further accounting needs to be done with regards to this loan note. Then we have deferred tax balance of 1500. This deferred tax balance has been given on the credit side of the trial balance, which represents the fact that this must be a deferred tax liability balance most likely on the opening date. If, 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 if not any other adjustment is given, uh, then this would be the opening balance. Interest paid 250. Now, remember, I always used to tell you in our initial lectures that do not believe interest given in the trial balance. You always need to calculate the interest expense on your own while reading the notes given into the question. Do not believe what examiner says is the interest paid. Because at the end of the day, in your financial statements, you need to account for the interest expense, not just the interest paid. So you need to cater this, uh, uh, you need to correct this interest value as well. Yeah. Uh, then you have a suspense account, which is um, you referred with note number two, and you have a suspense account credit balance of 3,500. Now you guys are already aware that suspense account cannot stay into your financial statements while you are preparing the financial statements at the end. So you need to correct this suspense account as well. And for that note, number two is the correct, uh, is, is the correct area where we would find this adjustment. Okay. So now let's go on to the relevant notes. And after reading the relevant notes, after solving the relevant notes, we will go on to the requirement and solve this question. Now let's start with note number one. Note number one is regarding loan notes. It says that a 5% loan note was issued, was issued on 1st of October X7 at its face value of $5 million. Now I'll just go to the Excel. I'll write down working number one and this working number one is going to be the loan working. Okay. Loan working. Yeah. So remember here we are an issuer. So if we are an issuer, this is most definitely the case of a financial liability. And you must remember that according to IFRS 9, by default, almost all the liabilities, financial liabilities are accounted for under the amortized cost model. And whenever you do accounting under amortized cost model, at least you, you need to know four things in order to solve a question. And that was you needed par value, you needed issue value, you needed coupon I'll write the full form here, coupon rate, and then you needed the effective rate. Four things are always mandatory if you need to solve a question according to IFRS 9. So do we know the par value now? So it said in the question that a 5% loan note was issued on 1st of October X7 at its face value of 5 million. Now, remember, the, sol the question is being solved in terms of thousands. So this 5 million would mean that we are talking about $5,000. So the face value or the par value is basically 5,000. And here you see that that loan note of 5,000 face value was of 5%. So the whatever the rate is written on the face of the bond, on the face of the loan note or the face of the debenture, that is always known as the coupon rate. So this is the 5% is the coupon rate. Yeah. Now let's move on. It says that direct cost of the issue amounted to 0 0.125 million or 125 uh, or, or, or one to 5,000 
and were charged to profit or loss. Now, you should remember that according to IFRS 9, any issue cost incurred on the issue of bond has to be capitalized within the value of the bond. You cannot charge issue cost directly in PNL. You take the impact of issue cost within the effective rate, and then that issue cost is actually amortized over the life of the bond. So your examiner has already charged one to five thousand uh, into profit or loss that needs to be added back. So if we start working on the issue value, so the par value was five thousand, yeah. So the par value was 5,000. You need to subtract issue cost from here, which is one to five. Uh -huh. And here I will also write it down. Here I will also write it down just a second so that I can convert it into the right format. Yeah, I'll do this uh, the same. So that percentages are effectively reflected. Yeah. So I'll, I'll also just write it down that according to IFRS 9, issue cost needs to be capitalized, capitalized and not charged upfront in PNL. So remember yeah, that you need to add back. You need to add back the issue cost of the PNL. The issue cost has been charged off the PN charged off in PNL, and therefore it is already written down in your retained earnings. You need to add back that charge, and rather than following this charge on year zero, the impact of issue cost will be capitalized against the liability, and it will be amortized over the loan period. So remember, you need to add back this charge from retain earning. All right. Just, just remember that. Okay. Uh, all right. So what would be your actual issue value after charging of this issue cost? Let us just clarify. It should be 4875. How did I calculate this? So 4875 should be your issue value in this question. Now, the question goes on to say that the, the loan will be redeemed in five years time. So the tenor is basically five years at a substantial premium, which gives it an effective interest rate of 8%. So we have the effective interest rate as well now, and that is 8% given. The annual repayments of 250,000, as was mentioned here in the question as well, the annual repayments of 250,000, 5 million at 5% are paid on 30th September each year. So the 5% interest payment uh, is paid each year. Now, how do you solve under the amortized cost model? You prepare a amortized, amortized cost schedule and how do you prepare an amortized cost schedule you you play the game of five columns you make a column of year then you have amortized cost brought forward and if you have brought forward you should all also have a carried forward column then you go for interest expense and then there is interest paid again you are a borrower so that therefore you will be paying off interest and charging of interest expense in your financial statement. Had you been an investor, uh, it would have been the vice versa case. All right. So let's start off with 1st October X7. On 1st October X7, this loan note was issued. And since it was to be issued on the value of 4875, 4875 worth of liability would have been recognized in your books of accounts, 4875. The next time we meet is basically on 30th September X8. The previous period's closing balance is going to become the opening balance for you guys, 4875. You are going to charge interest expense based on the effective rate. If you remember the requirements of uh, IFRS 9 correctly. So the effective rate is basically 8%. Yeah. So I will properly write it down. 
let us just change the format of this cell. I'll convert it into percentage so it is easier for you to remember. Yeah. And interest paid is basically going to be 5%. Okay. So interest expense is going to be calculated as 8% of the liability value. So the liability value is 4875 and you are going to multiply it by 8%. 4875 multiplied by 8%. So you get an interest expense of 390. Now you had to bear an interest expense of 390 considering the premiums, the discount and the coupon. However, you have just paid an interest which is worth a lesser amount and it should be face value of 5000. So I go on to the cell of 5000, right? with a negative sign so that interest paid is subtracted while I'm calculating the carried forward column. So 5,000 into 5% would give you 250 as was also mentioned in the examination requirement. The annual repayments of 250,000, which is 5 million into 5% are paid on 30th September each year. Now, remember, we had to bear an interest cost of 390, but we are just paying off interest of 250. The remaining 140, do we, uh, 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 we uh, are we not going to pay this 140 ever? No. One day or the other, you are going to bear this 140 uh, 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 thousand cost in the case uh, by bearing issue cost and by by providing premiums to the uh, investor. So eventually your obligation to deliver cash would be calculated as follows. You had the initial liability of 4875. Then you had to bear an interest cost of 390, but you, or you only uh, bared $250 worth of cost. So whatever remains goes on to your liability. It becomes your obligation to deliver cash and your closing liability therefore should be 5015. Now, this 5015 will go into your balance sheet. This will go into your SOFP. And if anyone asks me what will go into my profit or loss, my profit or loss is going to have an interest expense of not 250,000, but 390,000. 390,000 worth of interest expense is going to go in my PL. So my profit or loss will have will have a finance cost of 390,000. But remember that we also had to add back the issue cost that was already charged to PL. So we will reverse issue cost charged to retain earning earlier. So the issue cost charged to retain earning earlier was one to 5,000. If we revert it back, so the net finance cost, which has to go into our PNL is going to be 390 net of 125, 265 net finance cost is going to go in our PNL. All right. So this is the first ad adjustment that we have already done. Net finance cost, when it goes into your PNL or your retain earning, it is going to reduce your retain earning. So it is going to be a subtraction from your retain earning while we are calculating the revised retain earning. Remember, we have to adjust our draft retain earnings in order to get to the real retained earnings. All right. Now, without any further ado, let's move on to the second note, which is on non-current assets. And for this, I'm just going to copy down the text from above. It is going to be working number two, and it is going to be for uh, non-current assets, right? All right. Now, let's read note number two, my friends. It says that Loudon Company acquired an office building. Remember, we had two types of non-current assets. Let's go back to the question. Remember, we had two types of non-current assets. One was office building and one was factory cost. Now, the first paragraph of non-current assets is basically, uh, uh, is basically a discussion on office building. So the first part that we are going to 
see here is office building. Working number two is going to be about office buildings. Yeah. So it says that Loudon company acquired an office building for $20 million on 1st of October 20X2, which means how many years before we are standing on 30th September X8, or even if you talk about the start of the year, we are standing on 1st October X7. So X2 till X3, X3 first year, then X4 second year, X5 third year, X6 fourth year and X7 fifth year. So five years have already passed. It says that Loudon company acquired an office building for $20 million on 1st October X2, which is five years before from the start of this year with an estimated useful life of 20 years. So the depreciation pattern would have most likely been $20 million worth of cost, $20 million uh, worth of cost divided by 25 years. I can even write it down for you. The old depreciation would have been as follows. Would be $20 million divided by 25 years. And that would have been 20 divided by 25, which is my friends. Let me just uh, uh, correct it for you guys. This would have been, and we can do this in thousands just for clarity. 20,000 divided by 25, there would be 800,000 per annum. Now, this would have been your old depreciation, okay? So, it says that depreciation is charged on a pro rata basis, okay? It says that on 1st of April 20X8. So if you think the 1st of April 20X8 means with that whatever your examiner is going to say right now is going to be exactly on the mid-year. So exactly on the mid-year on 1st April 20X8 something happened and that your examiner is trying to define in front of you. So it says that on 1st April 20X8 the building was deemed to be impaired as its recoverable amount was estimated to be 12 million. So there was an impairment hint and therefore you need to perform an impairment testing on 1st of April 20X8. Now let us just begin working on impairment test. Impairment testing on 1st April X8, right? So remember, whenever you are performing impairment test, you need to compare carrying value versus your recoverable amount. Now, first you need to identify the carrying value of your office building. And how should this carrying value be determined? We will just do it here. So the cost of the office building, cost of the office building was 20,000 depreciation per annum would have been 800 per annum. We had calculated this before accumulated depreciation for, for five initial years for five initial years would have been 800 into five. And we can put up a minus sign here so that we get a negative value just for representation. Then we get carrying value on 1st October X7, that would be start of the year carrying value would be 16,000. Then since we are performing impairment test, since we are performing impairment test on mid of the year on 1st April X8, we need to go six months further. So I would say six months depth, six months depth means this year's six months depreciation would be minus 800 into 6 by 12 would be 400. And if we get carrying value on 1st April X8, this would be my friends 15,600. This is the carrying value on 1st April X8. Now remember, the depreciation for the first 6 months is going to be charged off into PNL. Don't forget this. The first six months depreciation is going to be charged off into PNL, and that is the reason why I bifurcated this year's depreciation and previous year's depreciation because I want to know how much old depreciation before any impairment has to go in the PNL. 
right? So the carrying value as on 1st April X8, I'm just going to link it from the relevant cell. It is going to be 15,600. And now we need to know the recoverable amount. Remember, recoverable amount is higher of two things. One is fair value and the other one is value in use. Now let's read the question further to know these items. It says that at that date, uh, by the way, it, it already said that its recoverable amount was estimated to be 12 million. So our examiner has rather actually calculated 12 million recoverable amount for us already. So 12,000 is basically the recoverable amount. Now remember my friends, impairment is set to arise as per IS 36. Impairment is set to arise when your carrying value, when your carrying value exceeds your recoverable amount, when your carrying value exceeds your recoverable amount. So here your carrying value exceeds your recoverable amount by 3600 and therefore this is the impairment charge. This is the impairment charge and this too has to be written off into your PNL. I would write it down just for this, just so that I remember this will also be charged into PNL. Your examiner says uh, that at that date, the estimated remaining life was revised to 12 years. Ignore the deferred tax consequence of this revaluation. Now, post this impairment charge, your revised net book value would be as follows. Your revised net book value after the write down of, of 3,600, your revised net book value would be worth 12,000, right? You had a carrying value on 1st April X8 of 15,600. You wrote off your asset by 3,600 and you will charge it off into PNL. And therefore, you will have a revised net book value of 12,000. And now you need to calculate the revised depreciation as well. The revised depreciation will be calculated on the revised useful life. Revised useful life. And the revised useful life is just, uh, it, yeah, it was just 12 years. 12 years. So the revised depreciation, depreciation per annum should be as follows. We will do 12,000 divided by 12 years. So that means 1,000, 1,000 thousands per annum. All right. So if we calculate the remaining carrying value of, of office buildings would be revised carrying value was 12,000 depreciation for last six months would be 1,000 into six by 12. We can also show the workings in our Excel and that will only support our examiner uh, checking our answer. So it, it's, it's wise to show off your calculations in bracket. Okay. So here we have 1000 multiply by six by 12. I'll just put them up minus sign so that we give, get, uh, we, it is easier for us to calculate a net value. Remember this six months depreciation is also going to go in PNL. Carrying value as on 30th September X8 is going to be 12,000 net of 500, our closing carrying value is going to be 11,500 and this is going to go in SOFP. So again, my friends, for the office building, for the office building, if someone asks me what is going to go in PNL and what is going to go in SOFP with regards to our office building, for PNL, this there is going to be the first six months depreciation. And if you remember the first six months depreciation was basically the first, oh, 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 the first six months depreciation was basically 400. Yeah. If you remember the first six months depreciation was 400. Then there is an impairment charge, which is also going to go into PNL. And then there is last six months depreciation, which is also going to go in PNL. So the whole PNL charge should be 400 plus 3600 plus uh, 500, the last six months depreciation. And we can do it as follows 
4000 plus 3600 plus 500 this is our complete pnl charge with respect to office buildings all right and then what will go into your sofp in your sofp your closing carrying value of office buildings is going to go in your uh, in 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 your sofp so sofp value is going to be 11500 okay so this is our closing balances very well done all right so we have done working number two, which is for office buildings. And now we are going to focus on working number three as well. So working number three and working number three is not going to be about office buildings. Most likely it is going to be about the remaining non-current asset, which is, I believe the factory. All right. We'll talk about the factory now. So it says that Loudon company had 10 factories on 1st of October X7, which is the start of the year. Loudon company sold one of its factories with a carrying amount of $3 million, which was calculated as cost 5 million and accumulated depreciation 2 million for 3.5 million. So disposal of one factory, disposal of one factory. So we had a factory whose carrying value was 5,000 minus 2,000, its carrying value was 3,000. And the sales proceed on disposal of this factory was 3,500. That means we get a gain on disposal of 500. We get a gain on disposal of 500. Yeah. So this gain on disposal has to go into your PL or the retained earnings, whatever the case may be. This is a gain which has to go in PL. Your examiner says that the only entry made in respect of this disposal is for the proceeds which have been credited to suspense, right? So what should have been the original entry to record such a disposal? The original entry to record such a disposal should have been that you would have received cash of 3500 and this should have been a debit you would have credited your asset because this is being disposed of. Your asset had a carrying amount of 3000. So it should have been a credit of 3000 and rest 500 should have gone into PNL. Now this should have been the accounting entry. This should, this should have been the original accounting entry. Now, what was your accountant's entry? Your accountant's entry was that it debited the only entry made in respect of the disposal is for the proceeds. So your accountant actually debited cash correctly. So it was a cash debit 3500 and rather than debiting asset and PNL in a credit, uh, your, your accountant actually credited the suspense account with 3500. And this is also witnessable from the trial balance suspense account balance. So your examiner, what actually did was your accountant actually did. It credited the suspense account by 3,500 credit. Now this suspense account needs to be closed. It cannot go into your final financial statements. So you need to prepare a correcting entry as well. So what should be the correcting entry? My friends suspense account will be debited by 3,500. It was wrongly credited. So now in order to nullify its impact, it will be debited. Suspense account is debited to nullify the impact. The cash has been correctly debited by your examiner. So no corrections there. As per the original entry, your asset and PNL should have been credited. It wasn't done by the examiner. So we will do it on our own. The correcting entry should be asset credit 3000 with a carrying value. And profit goes into your PL with a 500 value. This is a credit. So here you have made the correcting entry once and for all. So this is the correct pattern to follow. All right. Although making of the entries was not actually required, is, is never required. But whenever you are confused regarding something is it is advisable that you make an accounting entry for your own ease. The accounting entries are not a requirement by your examiner, but you can make an accounting entry or if you do not want to make an accounting entry or you think that you will consume a lot of time making an accounting entry showing original entry, accountant's entry and correcting entry. You just you can just add up a note here. Suspense account 
was wrongly credited was wrongly credited it would be nullified by asset and profit credit now just a random note here could actually help your examiner uh, making an understanding that you have the right knowledge you don't need to make correcting entries if it would consume a lot of time you can just add up a note and that would be enough for your examiner no not a problem at all all right so here we know that gain on disposal of 500 pnl has to be credited in your pnl it says that no depreciation has yet been charged on any non-current asset for the year ended 30th September X8. So no depreciation ha had been charged. We need to charge depreciation on the factory as well. The factories are depreciated at 15% per annum using the reducing balance method. So you need to calculate depreciation on factory. Now, since your examiner is following the reducing balance method, you need to apply 15% on the netbook value. So netbook value is calculated as cost less accumulated depreciation. Now, what should be the cost of your factory buildings? Let us just go back. You see, your factories had a cost of 40,000. This is given in your trial balance. But remember, this 40,000 also included a 5,000 worth of factory, which was disposed of during the year. So your updated remaining cost value of factories of nine factories would be 35,000. All right. And accumulated depreciation, if you look at it here, it is 11,100. But the asset that you just sold, the factory that you just sold, also had an accumulated depreciation of 2000. So you need to also exclude that from your balances. And hence you will have it. Uh, I will write a minus sign as well. 11,100 netted off with 2000. You will have a remaining accumulated depreciation of 9,100. This is simply 11,100 minus 2000 of accumulated depreciation. Okay. So remaining net book value that you have is 25,900 and as per the reducing balance method, your depreciation would be calculated at 15% on net book value. So 25,900 into 15%. So this is 3885, which will go into your PNL. If someone was to ask me that what would be the total charge for factories I would be calculating it as that 3885 will be going as a depreciation charge in your profit or loss account or in your retained earnings in that case. This will be netted off by the gain on disposal that needs to be recorded by you. It was earlier credited to suspense account. Your examiner did not record it. We will net it off from our depreciation expense and that is depreciation ex uh, expense of 3885 minus 500 gain on disposal. And that should be 3885 minus 500. The whole PL charge should be 3385. This will go into our PL. And if someone asks me what will go in my SOFP, in my SOFP, the carrying value of factory will be as follows. We have a remaining netbook value of 25,900, and there was a further depreciation charge of 3885. So the value that goes into our SOFP is double two zero one five and this will be charged this will be actually written down in our SOFP all right so here we are solving the question in its entirety we are solving the question in its entirety each and every working that we are passing by we actually conclude on what will go into PNL or what will go into an uh, in in SOFP if you solve this way, this will ultimately help you while you are preparing your SOFP or your PNL. This will help you ultimately. So just try to conclude what will go in SOFP and PNL while you are doing your workings. This is the catch. All right. So we are done with two notes and then we are left with only two further notes, which are very shorter notes. And then we can go on to the requirements. So the third requirement is uh, the th third paragraph is related to environmental provision. I'll just write it down in my Excel. This is working number four and this is related to provisions. All right. Let us just read. 
Loudoun Company has an obligation to clean up environmental damage caused at one of its factory sites during X7. So you have an environmental provision, you have an obligation to conduct uh, cleaning due to there was a spillage and it caused an environmental damage and you are obliged to incur a certain sort of expenditure. The cleanup is due to take place at the end of factory's useful life. So the factory's useful life, uh, uh, you know, is, is still a long way to go. The liability has been accounted for appropriately. And the balance at 1st October X7 represents the current, the correct present value at that date. Loudoun company has a cost of capital of 5%. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to worry about this environmental provision was updated till last year by 1228. You need to update this 1228 value till this year. So you need to recognize unwinding of discount. We will just recognize unwinding of discount. How should we do that? We will take our liability, which is 1228 and multiply it by the relevant discount rate, which is 5%. And there we get the finance cost. So it is 1228 into 5%. We get a charge. We get a charge of in our PNL of 61. All right. So if, if someone was to ask me what will go into my PNL with respect to the environmental provision, I would say 61. And if someone was to ask me that what will go in my SOFP. So in my SOFP, I'll just correct the spelling here. Uh, in my SOFP, the environmental provision is going to be as follows. The opening value was 1228. I will just add up 61 here. And therefore, I will have 1228 plus 61. My closing value would be 1289 SOFP balance. Now, this is going to be the closing balance of my liability going into uh, going into my SOFP. And most likely, since this liability will be incurred after, a, uh, after many years, when the life of the factory has gone down, this will be reported as a long-term liability in my books of accounts. It will be a long-term liability. This is not going to occur next year. It will occur after a lot of time. That is why we are discounting it. So it, this will be shown as a long-term liability, remember. Now we are left with the last working, working number five. And which is going to be for defer taxes. Let us just read what is given. It says that at 30th September X8, the tax written down value, the tax written down value of property, plant and equipment was 25 million. So our property, plant and equipment had a tax WDV or tax base of 25 million, whereas the income tax rate applicable was 25%, sorry, was 20%. Now, how did you account for defer taxes? Remember, we, we studied this in IS 12 that if you want to do accounting for defer taxes, you have to play a game of three columns. It was carrying value, tax base, and then you used to have temporary differences. So we have property, plant. So we have pp and &E, and we need to compare carrying value with the tax base in order to identify the temporary difference. And then we will go for the defer tax charge or the defer tax credit. The trial balance, sorry, the tax base value, the tax base value is already given by our examiner worth 25 million. So this is 25,000, my friends. Now, what is the carrying value of my property, plant and equipment? What is the carrying value of my non-current assets at the year end? I have two property, plant and equipment items. One is office building, which has a value. If I go up and see my office building is going to have a value of 11,500 at year end. Yeah. So there it is. Remember, this is our office building working. Uh huh. And here we have a closing balance of 11,500. So here I have office building of 11,500 plus factory value. 
and the closing value of my SOFP in the closing value of my factory building was to be double two zero one five. So it is going to be double two zero one five. I'm just going to add these both up double two zero one five. And here we have the carrying value. We compare carrying value with tax base and here we get that our carrying value is higher than our tax base. You remember from IS 12, we studied that whenever your carrying value is higher than your tax base, you always have a taxable temporary difference. And whenever you have a taxable temporary difference, you always get a defer tax liability. You always get a defer tax liability. So you need to multiply your tax uh, taxable temporary difference by the tax rate. The tax rate is 20%. I'll just change the formatting for you guys. So it, it is easier, easier for you to understand. So the tax rate is 20%. 8515, sorry. 8515 into 20%. This is a defer tax liability closing balance. This is a defer tax liability closing balance of 1703. We get a closing DTL of 1703 and this is going to go in our SOFP. Now remember, whenever we follow this format, whenever we follow this format, this is the balance sheet approach. This is the balance sheet approach. And if this is the balance sheet approach, whatever value of defer tax liability that you're going to calculate will only give you an as at closing value of defer tax liability. So 1703 is the closing defer tax liability that you get. While you have the closing balance for your balance sheet, you need to determine what will go into your PNL, a defer tax charge or a defer tax credit. For that, you need to compare your closing balance with your opening balance to get to know that whether it will be a charge or it will be a credit. You go into your trial balance and you see that the defer tax balance was 1500 as an opening balance. So the opening defer tax liability as per trial balance was already 1500. Your opening liability was 1500. And it was to increase to 1703. That means your liability was to increase by 203. If your liability was to increase by 203, your accounting entry would have been PNL debit 203 and defer tax liability credit 203. This would have been the accounting entry. So that means you are going to have a defer tax charge in your PNL, you are going to have a defer tax charge in your PNL. All right, my friends. So now we have concluded on the last working and we have figured out what will go into the PNL or will be adjusted against our retained earnings. Yeah. So now let us go on to the requirement. The requirement is fairly simple. For eight marks, your examiner says that you need to prepare a schedule of adjustment required to the retained earnings of Loudon company as at 30th September exit as a result of the information in notes one to four. So you need to prepare a schedule of adjustment with which will adjust your retained earning from a draft value to the closing value. So I have already prepared a certain format which will help us in our calculations. Here we have retain earnings as per our question, which is 4122. You remember that we had the retain earnings, draft retain earnings already available to us, the value of 4122. We need to adjust this retain earning by note 1 till 4, by the impacts of note 1 till 4. And then we will calculate a revised retain earning, which will be used in our SOFP, which is the requirement number B. So if you remember what adjustments were required in each of the four notes in note number one, there was a loan note issue. We had to add back the issue cost and take down the actual interest expense into our retained earnings. We had already solved this and we concluded that a net finance cost of 265 will be charged off in our PNL. Remember? Net finance cost of 265 will be charged off in PNL, and this includes the reversal of issue cost. 
Yeah. So we will just say that 265, I will put upon, I will put a minus because this is going to be a negative hit on your retained earnings. You are putting up a charge in your financial statements. Therefore, your retained earnings, your profitability will get reduced. Yeah. So it will be a minus. Then in note number two, non-current assets, we had two things. We had office buildings and we had factories. So for the office buildings, if you remember it correctly, one, there was an impairment charge. Then there was first six months of depreciation of 400. And then there was last six months of depreciation of 500. And we had already concluded that the total value going into our P and L would be 4,500. Remember here? Yeah. So we can go back to our format and we can also link it. We can also link it. I will put up an is equals to with a minus sign so that it comes on to a negative figure. And then we can go on to our workings just by moving our cursor. We can go on to our workings, link the relevant cell. And how do we do that? Just go on to the relevant conclusion and press enter. So this will link up your Excel to the relevant cell. So if your examiner is just wondering where this 4,500 is coming from, they can know from the taskbar that there is an Excel cell linked. And even if you don't do it this way, you can also refer to the relevant working in your narration, in your description. And that is also how your examiner can refer to the relevant working and your workings and can score you accordingly. All right. Then in the same note of non-current assets, we also had factory buildings. And if you remember again correctly, for factory buildings, we had quite a bit of things. We had a gain on disposal of 500. And then we also had a depreciation charge of 3885. The net value that was to go into our p &L was 3385, if you remember it correctly. Again, we can follow the same approach. We go to our format. Yeah, we need to make an adjustment to the retain earning. We can again link it, uh, link our Excel cell is equals to minus, minus so that it goes on to become a PL charge subtracted from our retain earning. Go to the relevant cell, either double click on it or single click and enter on it. And there you will have linked your depreciation charge on factories. Yeah. And you can also refer to the relevant working. So it is easier for your examiner to trace it out. Then we have environmental provisions. If you remember node three was environmental provisions. Node four was defer tax. Again, we go put is equals to subtract minus sign. Yeah. Give minus sign. Go on to the relevant working. Remember we had already decided that there will be a 61 finance cost unwinding of discount PL charge. We double click it and there we go. There we go. We get an environmental provision charge against our retained earning as well. And then the last note was regarding defer taxes. This is the last note that we need to adjust for. Again, we will put up an is equals to with a minus sign, go on to the relevant working and see that we already concluded that there is going to be a defer tax charge in our PNL of 203. We go there, link that cell and here we go. We have 203. Now the sum of all these adjustments, if you count them, count them down, the sum of all these adjustments would go on to become 8414. I can do it manually for you. This plus this plus this plus this. It goes on to become 8414. You had a retain earning as per question of 4122. You make a subtraction of 8414. And then you get a revised retained loss, not earnings. You get a revised retained loss of 4292 and that will go into your equity. That will go into your equity. All right. Now the next requirement, which is for 12 marks, my friend, every mark is for the workings. Some P sometimes student ask me, sir, do we need to show the workings as well? Or can we do the, these workings on a rough paper in our examination center? Will that work? No. The 12 marks that your examiner is going to give you is not for the balance sheet structure. 
it is ultimately for the working so you need to prepare good workings even if your balance sheet doesn't balance but you have done very good workings you will get the relevant marks so don't even try jo that just don't even push yourself for trying to balance a balance sheet sometimes even in my class i i'm not able to balance a balance sheet because i've missed up something but i don't care as long as you have done all the workings appropriately shown every working every logic properly you will get the required marks and even if you score 99 out uh, out of 100 in this fr paper i will accept you as a student don't worry about it yeah so uh, don't worry about the actual sofp show your workings okay so now we need to prepare a statement of financial position you now you know this how the statement of financial position format works you first you need to put up an heading statement of financial position as at the year end then you start off with non current assets we had two non current assets remember office buildings and factories i've just made a performer to save us some time you can do this on your own so office buildings now since we had already done all the workings all the relevant workings it is very easy for us to link that relevant cell is equals to for the office building we decided that 11500 remember this is the working of office building and we decided that the carrying value on 30th september x8 that will go into our balance sheet would be 11500 now you don't don't need to revert back to each and every working and just think what will go into your balance sheet we had already done that while we were solving the workings you have a closing balance of 11500 just link that yeah now we had factories again we are going to follow the same pattern is equals to we will go to the relevant working which was working number 3 if i remember it correctly we decided that the carrying value of factory that will go into our sofp will be 22015 we put up an enter and here we go in our balance sheet we have factory's value of 22015 and total non current assets add up to 33515 uh huh now after non current assets in our balance sheet we get current assets you go to the balance sheet and just figure out where the current assets are in this particular question current assets were already ready made given of 14700 so i'll just go to my excel write current assets in a particular cell write 14700 which were already given in the question pretty straight forward and here we get total assets value of 48215 okay now we need to balance this balance sheet by performing the latter part of our balance sheet which is equities and liabilities first is the uh, area of equity the ordinary share capital which was already ready made given in our balance sheet was $10000 so i'll just write it down $10000 then the other equity portion is retain earnings 4122 but no 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 don't take 4122 we had calculated revised retain earnings you can just link it up is equals to go to the relevant cell of 4292 and just link it yeah so you get a total equity of 5708 pretty straight forward then you have non current liabilities uh the format is actually incorrect i would need to add environmental provision in my non current liabilities as well so the defer tax liability which will go into our balance sheet remember defer tax is always a non current liability as per is 12 there is a given presumption that an entity which recognizes its current assets or current liabilities will always record will always record defer tax as a non current liability defer tax is never a current liability yeah so first non current liabilities in non current liabilities we are going to have defer tax let us just go on to the relevant working working number 5 it was the last working i remember the closing balance was 1703 if you remember it correctly closing balance was 1703 and that we already decided that will it will go into balance sheet remember 1703 that we calculated through the balance sheet approach yeah so i'll just go on to the cell and link it i get closing balance of defer tax in my non current liabilities next i have environmental provisions environmental provision the closing balance of environmental provision remember sofp is made as at so the closing balance goes into your balance sheet environmental provision was uh, 1289 yeah so it was compounded to include this year's time value effect as well 1289 we will add up here 
yeah the loan value the loan value was uh, in note number 1 remember note number 1 was related to loan notes yeah so we need to link loan notes value as well we'll go to working number 1 mm hmm so the closing balance of 5015 will go into sofp we already decided that yeah so the 5015 closing balance will go into our sofp we have linked this as well and now we just need to focus on the current liabilities and see if our question balances yes or no any even if it doesn't i don't care i will just find out the correcting uh, phase and then correct it yeah so current liabilities we already had you know uh, ready made current liabilities given of 34500 i am just going to write that down 34500 and here our balance sheet does not balance by 1289 let's just go and figure out what are we missing 1289 yeah and i know why this 1289 was not in the sum value yeah this 1289 was missing in the formula i'm just going to correct it and here we go the balance sheet has balanced 48215 48215 and here we go our balance sheet is done yeah so this this was one practice question for you guys how you, you are going to solve in in an excel it is always advisable that you go on to read the question first read the trial balance then read the adjustments and solve the workings the workings can be shown first and then the relevant pnl and sofp can be made it doesn't matter you can prepare the format of pnl and sofp first and then go on to do workings even that doesn't matter in an examination scenario since i already had made the uh, structure of the uh, PNL and SOFP in advance just to save some time. I adopted the methodology of forming a format first and then go on to workings, but most likely in your examination scenarios, workings would be your first priority. So I would suggest that go for the workings first and then you can structure out your PNL, SOFP, whatever the examiner's requirement is, you can structure it later. Yeah. So just let me know if it was helpful. You guys know where to contact me. You guys know that my, uh, you know, my, con my contact number is plus 9234527450092. You can always contact me whenever you want. If you have any queries, just feel free to WhatsApp me. Feel free to reach me. Uh, I hope this will help you a lot. All right. So thank you very much. See you next time. Allah Hafiz.